Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to worship today. This Sunday is the second Sunday of Easter. It's also sometimes known as Holy Humor Sunday. It is Camping Sunday, and is, that is the theme that we are picking up this morning. So we're pleased to have all of you worshiping with us today, and we welcome those who join us via our East Link broadcast. I would like to uh, thank those who will be sharing in worship with me today, to Camden Carpenter, who will be lighting our candles, to Luke Duran, who is going to be our liturgist today, to Ginny McGowan, and to Dean Perry, um, everyone helping out in our worship today. I would like to extend an invitation to all of you uh, to join us after worship today. And in a moment, Vicki will say a little bit more about that. But at first, I will draw your attention to some of the announcements that are printed. Happy birthday greetings go today to Ginny McGowan and to Sandra Bell, who celebrates on Tuesday. Reverend Kathy is away this week, and there is an emergency contact. If you need uh, do have a pastoral emergency, you are to call the office. Please, I do encourage you to read the announcements that are printed. I would like to draw your attention to Love Your Soul. So this is coming up on Monday, May 5th. It is only a one-hour event. There is no cost. They, Chandler Motors is uh, sponsoring our pizza. And what this is is an it's event for families with young children and a chance to come and spend just an hour with food and music and something thoughtful for your soul. So love your soul. And this is open not just to the families of our congregation, but the wider community as well. So please spread the word. There's a few posters around. There's an announcement in the bulletin. Love your soul, an event that the CD committee is sponsoring coming up on May 5th. A chance for families to come to spend a little bit of time together in a thoughtful and spiritual and meaningful way including uh, pizza, which is great for everyone. So, um, at this time then, I'd invite Vicki and Roger, both have an announcement. I'm not sure where Roger went. <laughs> there, okay. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Uh, we are kicking off the planting season with a baked potato and delicious topping celebration for coffee and conversation today. There's something for everyone, including doodle time at the tables for children and the creative at heart. Uh, we would like to thank everyone who has helped put this together uh, because we had uh, potatoes donated by Norman's uh, brother, son-in-law. Uh, we had many people doing toppings. And I'm just going to tell you some of the toppings, so just to lure you in a little bit. There's veggie uh, chili, there's pulled pork, there's regular chili, there's broccoli cheese, of course there's the sour cream and all the rest of the bacon and pickles, you name it, it's there. Um, there will be, everybody, there's no cost, but there is a donation uh, box that's set up, and all those proceeds will go towards church programs. So, we hope that you can come and take part in this wonderful day. Hope to see you there. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm here to promote the Tuesday Supper, the next Tuesday Supper. Uh, there's going to be a gathering on Tuesday, May the 7th at 6 p.m. Uh, in the gym. Uh, Justin Milne, a human rights lawyer at the firm Stuart McKelvey, is going to speak on the topic, Human Rights Progress for the LGBTQ Community, PEI Canada and internationally. Of course, his talk is of special interest to this congregation because we are an affirming congregation. Uh, the cost of the meal is $10, but tickets must be purchased at the, uh, uh, in advance, and they are available today at the uh, Richmond uh, Street entrance or during the week, uh, if you call up the office during the week. Everybody is welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. And our wonderful CD chair, Elma, has pointed out to me that I said Monday the 5th, and Monday is not a f the 5th. So our Love the Soul event is Monday, May 6th. 
from 5.30 to 6.30. So thank you, Elma, for pointing that out to me. So at this time, let us begin our worship with the lighting of our candles. Christ is risen. We light the Christ candle because Christ is here among us. May this light shine for us and for all creation. Hallelujah. Honoring the beautiful diversity in our world, each person a reflection of Christ's light, we light the rainbow candle. As we gather to worship, we acknowledge that the land on which we gather is the traditional and unceded territory of the Abigwit Mi'kmaq First Nation. May we live with respect on this land and in peace and friendship with its people. Let us prepare for worship. Please join me in the call to worship. As the welcoming smell of cooking from a distant fire attracted the disciples, as Paul experienced the presence of Jesus on the road bringing him to new life in Christ, may we open ourselves to the presence of God alive in this place and in our hearts. We join our hearts and voices to give praise and thanks this day.
In the warm, bright sun of spring, we watch excitedly. The green shoots rising, the red buds bursting. We see and feel life awaken in our presence. We thank you, God, for the breath of new life in Jesus. Gentle, cleansing rains wash away the dusty grays of winter and draw forth the sap and nectars of new growth. We see and taste nature made new and colorful. We thank you, God, for the breath of new life in Jesus. In the warming breeze of approaching summer, in the song of the birds and children laughing at play, we see and hear life reborn. We thank you, God, for the breath of new life in Jesus. We thank you, O oh God, for all of creation and the opportunities that are ours to share this wonderful world with each other. Gather us together as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Um, now we will sing hymn number 289 in Voices United. It only takes a spark. And I would like to invite the children to join me at the front of the church, please. <clears throat> Hello everybody, how are you doing? Good. So I'm here to talk about Camp Abiguit. Has anyone gone there before? Okay, one person. All right, cool, cool, cool. Oh, two people. Awesome. So um, Camp Abiguit is an awesome church camp that is affiliated with the church here. Um, gives everyone the opportunity to go and you know, really learn more about God and, and uh, expand in your relationship with Him. So I have um, gone to camp. I've gone as a camper, a counselor in training, and a counselor. So I've had a lot of experience with camp, and I'm here to share with you guys about that. So the first time I went to camp, I was 13 years old, and I was pretty nervous to go at first because, you know, I didn't really know what it was like. And, um, you know, new people and stuff like that it makes me nervous to, to meet new friends and stuff. But I went. Um, I had a great time. Um, I was introduced to a very welcoming um, environment at camp. Um, everybody there 
is very nice. They accept you for who you are. Um, the staff, the counselors, are very, very nice people, and their job is to ensure that everyone is having a fun time and everyone feels comfortable. Um, well, personally, I really came out of my comfort zone when I was there. I uh, was, well, I acted like myself, you know. Um, I just um, made a lot of new friends and stuff like that. <clears throat> Um, it's very easy to make new friends at camp because the uh, experience with me anyway is everyone there is there to have fun and they don't really care about much else other than that. So you go, everyone is there and you're doing the same stuff, you know, you're in the same cabin as some people. And if you're there with, with the same cab mates for a week, it's very easy to, to meet new friends. Um, camp, for me, is one of the places where I feel the closest to God. There's very beautiful nature there. Um, there's very beautiful chapel in the woods. And I feel very close to God there. There's plenty of activities at camp. Um, there is sports and recreation. It's one of my personal favorites. Um, arts and crafts. Outdoor activities in the woods, which is very fun. Camping overnight in the woods. So we uh, put up some tents and we sleep in the woods. It's very fun. Going to the beach, get to go swimming. Godly play, which I know all of you do here at Trinity. And plenty of times to learn and praise God. Plus more. There's always something to do at camp. To end the week, we have a very cool dance. With a lot of, yeah, exactly. With a lot of new and cool music. Um, it's very fun. And then at the end, there is a very cool... Uh, very beautiful closing ceremony where everyone in arts and crafts um, paints a jar and then all the jars that you paint we take out and we put a candle in them we light all the candles and we turn off the lights in the uh, in the room and then all you can see is the light of the candles and it's very cool very nice and then we go around the room and everyone says their favorite part of camp and that's, that closing ceremony is always one of my favorite parts because it's, um, it's pretty emotional, but it's really cool to see what everyone liked about camp. Um, the, the lot is pretty cool, um, the camp itself. There's a nice, a nice big lodge with a big dining hall. Um, and then there's a recreational area, which is, it's kind of like a gym. Um, we play games in there, do other stuff, and on the side of the uh, recreation building there is an arts and crafts room, which that's where we go for to do all our arts and crafts. Um, we have a campfire pit. We we do campfire if it's if the uh, if the fire index isn't high. Um, there's a nice woods. There's a path. And then there's a cool chapel in the woods. It's like just a place to worship God. Yeah. yeah. Um, there is 12 cabins. Most are in fully functioning use, which is good. Um, and yeah, that's a uh, camp. So. I've got some brochures here, if anyone's interested in going. Um, there's funding available through Trinity. What's that? There is archery, yes, um, which is really cool. We, we introduced that new last year. So, yeah. Um, would anyone like a... Oh, really?
Well, there is now. So if you go this year, you'll be able to do archery. Any questions? Yeah, we we uh, we do prayers every night. It, we do it at it's called Vespers, where we go to the woods. That's kind of like our mini church service that we do. Um, and there's there's usually there's usually more prayers throughout the day, but that's like the main time where we go to do our prayers. Yeah. Any other questions? No. Nope. Does anyone want to take one of these brochures home? Yeah? All right, if anyone wants one, they can come up and get one. Anyone else? All right. You guys can go to Sunday school. Let us pray. Living God, as you revealed yourself to the disciples, we ask that you reveal yourself to us in the reading of scripture today. We ask that you open our spirits, our minds, and our hearts as we listen for your life-giving message. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 9, verses 1 to 20. Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly, a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you'll be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment he is praying, and he's seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. 
So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately, something like scales fell from his eyes, and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days, he was with the disciples in Damascus, and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. Psalm 30, Voices United, page 757. Extol you, O God, for you have lifted me up. O oh God, my God, I cried to you for help, and you restored my health. You brought me back from the dead. You saved my life as I was going down to the grave. Let all your servants sing praises to you and give thanks to your holy name. My prosperity, I said, I shall never be shaken. Your favor, O oh God, has made me as firm as any strong heart. You turned your face away from me, and I was greatly dismayed. I called to you, I made my appeal. What problem is there in my death? In my going down to the grave. Will the dust give you praise? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? You turned my mourning into dancing. You stripped off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, so that my heart will sing your praise without ceasing. O oh God, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. So a reading from the Gospel of John. And this reading comes at the very end of John's Gospel. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And he showed himself in this way. Gathered together were Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. And they said to him, we will go with you. And they went out and got into a boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? And they answered him, no. He said to them, cast your net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. 
That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. And when Simon Peter heard this, that it was the Lord, he put on clothes for he was naked and he jumped into the lake. The other disciples, they came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish. For they were not far from land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time, Jesus said to Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, tend my sheep. Jesus said a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter felt hurt because he said it to him a third time, do you love me? And Peter said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. After he said this to him, he said, follow me. Hear what the Spirit is saying to you.
Thank you, that was beautiful. They are outdoors. The air around is fresh with the scent of the nearby water. The sound of the waves gently lapping on the shore creates a quiet and calming tone. As I gather on the beach, each one draws in closer to the fire for warmth. The crackling sound of the burning logs emitting sparks that leap into the air is very much reminiscent of the charged feeling of the atmosphere that surrounds this group. The feeling here is special. At first, no one speaks. The moment is too precious to have the silence broken by words. Sometimes you feel in your heart some things you simply know. And so as the fish begins to cook and the oil drips into the coals below, as the smell of warm bread fills the air, none of them dare to ask who welcomes them to this fire. They know God is here. They are outdoors. And the air around is fresh with the scent of the nearby water. The sound of the waves gently lapping on shore creates a quiet and calming tone. As they gather on the beach, each draws closer to the fire for warmth. The crackling sound of the burning logs emitting sparks that leap up into the air is very much reminiscent of the charged feeling of the atmosphere that surrounds this group. The feeling here is special. Everyone is talking, laughing, for they are friends. The moment is special. Some things you feel in your heart, some things you simply know. And as the camp songs begin, so does their evening vespers. There is something extraordinary in this moment. And none of them need to ask. They know God is here. By the side of the Sea of Tiberias, or on the shore of Camp Abiguet. It is easy to know, easy to feel God's living presence. Many people, including myself, make the deepest spiritual connections outside. Yet often people will go through a whole day without ever noticing or especially feeling something of nature. I think we're very fortunate here in PEI because we are largely rural. Even our cities are not large and most people will hear the song of the birds, see trees budding, have an opportunity to walk on the grass. Though even here it would not be hard to spend one's day never touching the grass or watching a sunset. And this may be especially true for children. Children go from the safety of their homes to the confines of the schoolyard and brick buildings. And when they return home, they watch TV, they do their homework now very often on a computer. They text on their phones, never needing to hear a human voice. We plan activities and programs and exercises, and this is not a critique on how people live today, simply acknowledgement of the way things are for many. So what a gift it is then 
for any child today to have a place where the wind and the waves and the laughter of others are the sounds that they hear. Ethan McKinnon, who lives in Stratford, shares his experiences of camp, and they are not unlike Luke's. And this is what Ethan writes about camp. Last August, I had the privilege of attending Camp Abbey for a week, and it was the highlight of my summer. I met other kids from my age, from all over PEI, that shared the same values. We came together to have fun and have the opportunity to try new activities like archery, which I loved. Our outdoor life consisted of hiking, games, swimming on a daily basis, bonfires, and one night of tenting in the woods, which became an adventure in itself, since we forgot to close the flap over the window, and it rained. We were unplugged for the week. No TV, no cell phones, no internet. But we were connected by lots of conversation and social activities. The staff really cared about us and encouraged interactions among cabins. The food was both nutritious and delicious. Healthy fruits and vegetables were served along with comfort food and homemade cookies. We also had responsibilities and rules, like keeping our cabin tidy and respecting each other. Luckily, using sleeping bags made it easy to make our beds. And sharing a cabin with five other campers, two counselors, and a counselor in training made sure that we respected each other's space and belongings. Nightly Vespers was great. The campers were divided into groups at the beginning of camp, and each night one group was responsible for conducting the service. This was a fun way to learn about our faith and society in a way that was interesting and related to people of my age group. Overall, Camp Abbey was a fun, valuable, and rewarding experience. Ethan says, I can't wait to go back next summer. What a gift it is for children to walk in the woods, to curl their toes in the sand, to see the stars overhead. The United Church of Canada has had a long history of supporting church camping, and Camp Abiguit, of course, is our camp here in PEI. And some of you have been there, and I know many of you support the camp. And the camp does need support. There are many ways to help, from donating supplies to financial donations, and they are now establishing an endowment fund, which we're going to hear about in our Minute for Mission. Camp is important. This is Camping Sunday, and it comes right after Earth Day, and during this wonderful time of spring when the wonder of creation is so evident if we get out and experience it. Experience, I think, is a great teacher. Some things we can only know because we have experienced them. And if someone were to ask me why I believe in God, I would reply because of my own experience of God's presence in my life. God's presence is something I feel, and feelings cannot be described in words. That's why they're feelings. And feelings are deeply personal, so we can't always share them. And such it is with faith. As the disciples sit on the shore, gathered around that fire, none of them dared to ask who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Their experience, first of being directed to try something different and finding their nets full of fish. Then the experience of sitting and eating bread and fish. 
led the disciples to know that God was alive and among them. God is present in every moment if we look. We will see that God is there. It's just that some places, like camp, God seems to be easier to recognize. I did not go to a church camp when I was growing up. However, when I was a teenager, I was part of a youth group at my local church, and we would spend a few days at the end of our Christmas holidays at a church camp. Now, not everyone thinks of church camping and winter at the same time, but I loved this event and continued to attend as long as it was, the event was held. So we stayed at a big lodge in the woods near a lake, and on the frozen lake we would play broom ball and sometimes skate if the conditions were right. We had to cook all our own meals and clean up together. We spent a lot of time learning about our faith and what we believed and what was important in life. It was always a deeply spiritual time. We connected as a group, and we connected with God. And one of my most profound memories from this winter camp, and I may have shared this one other time, was when our leader asked each of us to go off to a place by ourselves and to sit in silence. And I chose to go outside and to sit in the snow leaning up against a large maple tree. And it was near the end of our time at camp and we would return to home and to school and to our weekend jobs. And I remember thinking, well, tomorrow it's back to the real world. Only to immediately realize how wrong that thought was. Where I was, was the real world. The real world, the way God wants us to experience life, was the way we lived at camp. Where we connected with nature, where we lived in community with one another, and where we were very much aware of God's presence with us. Now, many of you may feel you are beyond the age of attending camp, but we can still engage in many of the activities that make camp special. Be mindful of God. Get together with people and talk about your faith. And even if you must do it within the confines of your mind, go outside. Touch a tree. Feel the grass. Watch the sunset. Listen to the frogs. Say a prayer. Give thanks. You will find that God is not so distant as we sometimes think. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God.
Camp Abigwit, more commonly known Camp Abbey, a United Church camp here in PEI, has begun a new endowment fund campaign. The campaign is meant to create a solid financial foundation for the camp and its important ministries. Our summer camp serves hundreds of children who love to learn through our programs. Camp helps them grow socially and spiritually in what for them is often a crazy and mixed up world. At Camp Abbey, campers are supported as they explore the questions children often ask as they grow up. Camp Abbey provides children with a family-like environment away from many of the distractions of their daily lives. It is intended to nurture a sense of the presence of God that is often blotted out by the distractions of their daily lives. Camp Abiguit was founded in 1946 and since then has served between 30,000 and 35,000 children, campers from 5 to 16 years of age. Owned and operated by the United Church of Canada on PEI, serving kids from all kinds of backgrounds and circumstances. About 15 years ago, the camp was still serving hundreds of kids, but its facilities were in terrible condition. The camp was faced with the question of whether to keep going or close its doors. The decision was to keep going. So, starting in 2005, a capital fundraising campaign. It took four years and a lot of hard work by a huge group of volunteers. That campaign raised one million dollars. As a result, the facilities were transformed. The older buildings were replaced by a new lodge, a recreation and arts and crafts building, a chapel in the woods, and a director's cabin and a cook's cabin. Road improvements, erosion prevention, a land trade, and several duck ponds um, were all completed within budget. In summary, we now have excellent facilities. Now we are building a solid financial foundation with the endowment fund campaign. In this day, the age, in this day and age, financial security is a must for any businesses, including our camp. It is hoped that the camp endowment fund will provide a long-term investment fund where the income generated from the fund itself will be used to generate an, in an income in perpetuity to the for the camp. The funds will be managed and strengthened by the newly formed Board of Trustees, which is headed by Honorable David Jenkins. Donations from individuals or businesses are most welcome. Pledge forms and brochures are in the back of the church, or you might even consider remembering Camp Abbey in your wills. Together with your encouragement, prayers, and support, we can ensure that future generations of children will grow in grace and know the joy of camping, church camping. Let us pray. Christ lives in my story and in yours. Let us share the gifts that we have, that others may experience the, wonder, the wonderful of the risen Christ. The offering will now be received.
Like your presence, a campfire is comforting, warming, alive. May you, living and loving God, use these gifts that they may bring the blessing of life and be a source of comfort for those in need. May the warmth of your love touch be shared through these gifts. Amen. Let us pray. Great and loving God, we give you thanks for this day and each day, each breath and each moment of life. We praise you for the beauty of your earth, for each creature, each plant. Help us to care for your creation. We are sorry for the ways we hurt the earth. Forgive us when we waste paper or let the tap run without thinking. Help us to give thanks for the shimmering, slithering creatures of water as we give thanks for the green, growing life of trees and plants. We give thanks for the winged creatures, the song of the birds and the work of the bees. We are all connected. Forgive us when we forget that we are made to live together. Thank you for your love, which is growing in us all, in each branch, each wing, each wiggle, each breath. Hear us as we pray for your earth. We pray for our brothers and sisters, for the sick and the lonely, for those struggling with challenges that seem too great. We pray for those who mourn, feeling deeply the pain of losing someone dear to them. Hear our prayers and longing for peace. We pray for leaders the newly elected members of our legislature, and for leaders throughout this world, especially in places of conflict and war. We pray for children, all children. We pray that they may feel safe, know love, and grow in faith each day. Thank you, God, for gathering us together as your people and for showing us the way. Amen.
as we walk from here. May the creator within you and around you, above you and below you, bless you and keep you, both now and forevermore. Amen.